Did anything good happen on Sunday night, man? I don't know. If you were at the Melrose Ballroom last night in Astoria, Queens, you might have seen something really, really fucking awesome happen. Bound for Glory, Austin Aries, Johnny Impact. I don't like that name. I'm going to call him John Morrison. Because that's the way I remember him. John Morrison. Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, Johnny Survivor, Johnny Come Lately, John Morrison, John Hennigan. One of my favorite guys on the indie scene, John Morrison. Impact got a lot of people talking on Sunday night. So much so that an innocent individual like myself who was in attendance, who wanted to capture John Morrison winning the Impact World title because I've been a fan of his work for so long, And I wanted to capture that moment on my iPhone and then post it to Instagram and be like, hey guys, look at John Morrison. He just won the Impact World title on a great main event at Impact's Bound for Glory last night. And then little to everybody, we get Starship Payne to close the show. Austin Aries no-sells it, gets up, points to Don Callis, who is on the second floor of the Melrose Ballroom doing commentary, Gives him the fucking finger. And before that, which a lot of people didn't see, but if you if you go to my Twitter and look, you can briefly catch for a millisecond Austin Aries spit in the direction of John Morrison before he flipped off Don Callis and then walked out of the ring, no selling Starship Pain, and then walked up the ramp and gave the double bird, the double I love you, to the New York City crowd and walked away. And walked away. And I posted this clip And within minutes, and thanks to Ryan Satin for not crediting where he got the clip from, I really appreciate that level of professionalism. The only guys that actually reached out to me, believe it or not, were What Culture Wrestling for the clip. JD, how are you? I hope all is well. Can we please use your clip? Yes, of course you can. You you asked me nicely, unlike Mr. Satin, who didn't fucking do anything but show the tweet. You know, no link to Twitter, no no, no link to the YouTube channel, no link to the podcast. You weren't in attendance. I didn't have to get no fucking clip. Anyway, it's another fucking story for a different day. I'm sure I'll rant about it on Off the Script. But, little known to everybody, we, we were watching something that everybody got, you know, excited about, talking about on Sunday night and into the early hours of Monday morning. People are still talking about it now. This was absolutely fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I've always stated, and a lot of other people who do what I do, always mention, that when you throw a dose of reality, a dose of realism, into something that you're watching on a professional wrestling show, it becomes that much more interesting. Really. And this is something that we are starving for on Monday and Tuesday nights. It's something that WWE just will not do for whatever reason. And people are leaving that show and the audiences are not watching that show in record numbers. We get the same fucking garbage every single week. Rinse and repeat. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, The Shield, blah, 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 blah. Every week. No change. Got the fucking Ascension versus Bobby Roode and Chad Gable for fucking eight weeks in a row now. Meanwhile, people are looking for alternatives. And Impact played this entire thing, this entire main event, all weekend, to perfection. I loved every fucking second of it. Every second of it. This is what people want to see. Did it get people talking for the main event? Absolutely. Absolutely. Was it enough to drive pay-per-view numbers to the point where Impact would be okay with it? And, you know what, successful? We had a successful venture here? I don't know. I don't know. It might have been too late. I don't watch Impact TV on a week-to-week basis. I don't. That doesn't mean I don't pay attention to what they're doing or, or read the reports of what comes out of their TV tapings. I mean, for fuck's sake, I work with Impact Talent at House of Glory. I absolutely love LAX. I love Sammy Callahan. I love Pentagon and Phoenix. Brian Cage, awesome. John Morrison, fantastic. 
they got one of the best rosters assembled right now for any wrestling promotion. I think their roster is fucking great. On top of that, they got the best woman's wrestler in the world right now. And don't at me, please. Tessa is greater than Charlotte. I'll say it again for the fucking clowns that want to come at me on social media. Oh, how could you say that? She is. Simple as that. At least Tessa, to me, and we'll talk about it, she, she, she is just... She's amazing at what she does, man. She carries herself like a champion. She wrestles like a champion. She looks like a champion. I mean, everything she does has been money. And how WWE didn't sign her is beyond me. Whatever their loss is, is certainly impacts gain. But we're talking about here, obviously the main thing I want to discuss is this Austin Aries, John Morrison situation. This was fantastic. Now, the whole storyline revolved around... You know, Austin Aries and Johnny Johnny Morrison to to a point where it, it started off where Aries just made fun of Morrison and all his his nicknames. Everywhere he goes. He's Johnny Mundo on Lucha Underground. He's Johnny Impact and and Impact. He's Johnny Nitro. John Morrison, Johnny Survivor, whatever the fuck you call yourself nowadays. All your eggs, all these different eggs in different baskets, right? Now, all these, all these names, you're filling every glass half full, and, and you're a nobody, you're a loser, you know? This was great, and it's that dose of realism that we need to see in professional wrestling. And that opening promo to get this entire thing started, I watched it back, six minutes of it, you can find that on Impact's YouTube page. Honestly, to me, one of the best promos between two men of 2018 in any promotion. I thought it was great. Aries, every word he said, I, I hung on every fucking word that came out of that guy's mouth. And then Mundo, Morrison, you know, he, he stood there like a cocky prick that he is because he knows he's fucking good and whatever Austin Aries is saying, dude, you could say whatever you want, you know? You talk about you're the greatest of all time. You're, you know, you're, you're the greatest man that ever lived. You're the Impact World Champion. Morrison stood there and he laughed and he smirked and he, it, it, like, it bounced off him like fucking, like he was wearing a bulletproof vest. You know? Like he was uh, Neo from The Matrix. Everything that came at him, he just fucking stopped. Because he knew that whatever he was saying, dude, I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up whatever I say here in the ring. So you can call me a loser all you want. I, I know I'm on your level, if not greater. So that's the kind of vibe I got from, from Morrison in that promo. Then it went to, uh, uh, I would say, a gray area where, you know, a lot of people usually get blasted on social media. So it went from, you know, each other, back and forth. Then, then, then Austin Aries takes a shot at Morrison's wife, you know? So we, we got Taya in this whole thing, Taya Valkyrie, and Austin Aries makes the comment of, your wife is husky. Or something along those lines. He, he said she's a big girl. Without saying, listen, you know. He didn't out, outright say, he used the word husky. Okay. You know, but any any which way you look at it, you dance around the, the fat shaming topic on social media. People get up in arms about it. I mean, look what happened with Nia Jackson and fucking Grimm's Toy Show. You know, Grimm's Toy Show. I met Grimm several times in person. Couldn't be any more nicer. Loves everybody, appreciative of everybody. If you don't watch Grimm, and then you hear a comment like that, you're, you're immediately going to jump to conclusions about, oh, this guy's a fat, shaming motherfucker, son of a bitch. Who, who, who is he to be talking? Look at him. Blah, blah, blah. You know, Nia Jax found out about it. One of the, one of the fucking clown parade, you know, uh, of, the, uh, of the Nia camp, the Nia superfans. Just like the Alexa superfans and the fucking Sasha Banks superfans. My God, the worst people you can come across on the internet. You know, backing her up and defending her. Look at what this fat slob said, blah, blah, blah. So, there was a back and forth between that. Grim felt bad about it. You, you, you know, you dance around the fat shaming thing and people are going to get up in arms, man. They're going to put up their defenses. They're going to fucking have all guns blazing, you know. It's ridiculous. So, clearly that struck a chord with John Morrison and Taya. Tweets were deleted for whatever reason, you know, which lended to the credibility that some of it was actually legit. 
that they went above and beyond to sell this match. Things got so heated that personal things were stated, and then they were not a part of what the script should have been. Tweets were deleted, and it led to John Morrison going to TMZ. John Morrison, of all fucking people, on TMZ, Impact on TMZ, I didn't even know they covered TMZ. So when I seen John Morrison and, and, and Taya on, on TMZ, I was like, what the fuck's going on? TMZ's all over the place, you know? Which is a good thing, I guess, you know? Everybody, uh, everybody eats. If Impact is on TMZ, I guess they're making some fucking waves. But John Morrison is blasting Austin Aries on TMZ, and, you know, things are being said on there. This was after the tweets were deleted, and Austin Aries was like, ah, I went too far. So we go to the Hall of Fame induction with the Miss, Joseph Park. And then Solomon Monster, who was there as a guest of Impact, or I think he paid for it, I'm not really sure, but he was there. He was there, and he posted a clip of a huge pull-apart brawl that happened at the end of Abyss's Hall of Fame induction. Austin Aries takes the stage on the podium, and... He's like, you know, things were said, I apologized, and, you know, I, I deleted some tweets that were a little out of line, and I apologized for that, all while Morrison and, and Taya are sitting front row here. And then Austin Aries looks over, and, and he looks over at both Morrison and, and, and Taya, and he's like, well, then you go on TMZ, and you start talking shit about me, and then you start the whole fucking thing all over again, and then all of a sudden, you know? Which, to me, I'm watching this, and I'm like, well, Aries didn't really say anything, but you going on TMZ to talk shit about me. And then all of a sudden, Morrison gets up as if, you know, that was such a, a bad thing to say. And, and then there's a pull-apart brawl. Josh Matthews is getting involved. Don Callis is getting involved. Solomon is there filming the whole, th whole thing. It's on his Twitter account. And, and he, tells, he tells everybody, Ed Nordholm is in the fucking corner filming the whole thing, so you know it's all part of the show. You know, and Austin Aries and John Morrison did a great fucking, absolutely fantastic job with the with this brawl at the Hall of Fame induction for Abyss. F-bombs being thrown all the way, Aries playing the fucking character that he was born to play, absolutely fucking savage prick was Austin Aries. Morrison played it well, everybody played it well, Taya was screaming, Tessa Blanchard who fought Taya at Bound for Glory holding her back, just mass chaos all over the place, mass chaos, it was great. It was great fucking television. People were talking about Impact. And they did such a great job that I'm going to go out on a limb here and say out of every main event that I see, minus NXT because I'm, I'm an NXT diehard. Even WWE main roster, man, that is the type of shit I want to see. It brought me back to why I love professional wrestling. That just old school mentality of blurring the lines. And, you know, I listened to Salamance's podcast. I, I heard him explain everything. And, and even when I watched the clip before I listened to his podcast, I'm like, this got to be it. This got to be a, a work shoot. They're going for a, a dose of realism here, but it's all part of the plan. It's all part of the storyline. So I didn't really fall for it. But if you're asking yourself, well, is this real? Is this work? Is this a shoot? If you're questioning yourself on anything, any aspect of this, then... Impact's done their job. Impact's done their job. This is something that I wish more wrestling promotions would do. That is what suckers the people in. I don't watch Impact on, on a week-to-week -week basis. If I, di if I didn't, which I don't. If I didn't know anything about Impact, but I knew who these guys were, and I seen that, I'd pay the $40 to watch this shit on pay-per-view. I would have been on my Fight TV app, I would have hooked up my Google Chromecast, I would have hooked it up to my TV, and I would have sat for three hours and watched Bound for Glory. That's how great I thought this was. And impacted everything right to get these guys in a position to where it is going to be a main event that people want to see. You can't fault them for that. Then we get to the pay-per-view. They got promo packages from Aries and Morrison throughout the night. Asshole, you piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. Things being thrown. The realism continues in the video package that were live there at the Melrose Ballroom. Match was good. Match was good. You know, uh, I wouldn't call it a, uh, a barn burner. I wouldn't call it a five-star classic. I love the work of Austin Aries. I think he's great. 
WWE missed the boat on him. I don't know how the fuck you miscast or misbook Austin Aries. But whatever the case may be, he found success in Impact Wrestling. I'm happy for him. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Same goes for John Morrison. I, I, I've been wanting John Morrison to have a huge run in the WWE for so many years. I wish he'd come back and they'd give him the fucking run that he deserves. You know? Not that I'm not enjoying what he's doing in Lucha Underground and Impact Wrestling and everywhere else he's working. You know? But the match itself, for what it was, was good. Impact, in the last 72 hours before the show, have developed such a big hype that I think it, I think it superseded the match itself. They had a level of expectation that they had to live up to, and I, I don't think the match met it. It came close, but I don't think the match met everybody's expectation after what we see. The reason why I, I liked the match was because even in the match, with what they were doing against each other, it, it blurred the line of real or or script, scripted. I sat. I would say I would say I sat third row, ringside. Small place, Melrose Ballroom. It's a very, very nice place. I love the intimate atmosphere of the Melrose Ballroom. But Morrison and Aries, man, there were some moments in that match where they were stiffing each other, and I had a damn good fucking view of what was going on, man. You know, Aries was stiffing Morrison, and then Morris, Morrison knew, you know, like, what the fuck's going on here, man? And then Morrison just paid him back with an elbow shot or a kick or, or whatever. It was, it was to a point where... You, you, you watched the match, and it was legit. They were really blasting each other in there at several points in the match. And if they weren't, I'd be shocked. They took that level of realism to the match, and these guys played their roles up until a certain point. Then came the ending, which got everybody talking about. I had my phone out. And I genuinely wanted to capture the moment of John Morrison winning the Impact World title. That's all I wanted. I got the pinfall. I wanted to see him celebrate with his wife. And then the night, I go home, I go to sleep. I had no idea. And people on social media thought that, that being that Impact invited me to the show and I got tickets to the show last night, that I, I was filled in on the ending. I wasn't filled in on anything. I don't work for fucking Impact. House of Glory talent was there. I didn't talk to them before the show. I met everybody after the show. I doubt they knew either. But all because I got invited to the show doesn't mean I was filled in on the ending. So people are fucking either salty or completely oblivious. I went to the show because I was genuinely interested in watching the show. I wanted to cover the show, which I'm doing here on the channel for you guys. I had no idea of the ending. Took my phone out. And then all of a sudden, Starship Payne, one, two, three, Morrison, new champ, good to go. Kept the camera rolling. Austin Aries, as soon as he was nailed with the Starship Payne or the end of the world, whatever you want to call it, and Morrison was announced as the new champion, he got up. Didn't even sell the effects of Starship Payne. Got up immediately. Walked over to the turnbuckle, pointed to Don Callis, uttered some words, flipped him off, before that, spit in the direction of Morrison, got up, walked away, and gave the fuck you, double bird, to the Queen's audience at the Melrose Ballroom, and walked away. 50 seconds of a clip I uploaded on my Twitter account. John Morrison wins the Impact World title as Austin Aries no sell star Chapin and flips off Don Callis, Don Callis and gives everybody the fucking fuck you at the end of the night. I wake up this morning, the thing is almost at 80,000 fucking views on Twitter. Ryan Satin covers the thing, takes the tweet, puts it on Pro Wrestling Sheet. What culture's emailing me, uh, or DMing me rather on Twitter? JD, could we use the clip? Everybody talking about this shit. Everybody's talking about this shit. Impact did fantastic with the build to this match, and they, 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 they just... Blurred the lines to get people talking enough to a point where it created a huge buzz. And this is for a company that absolutely fucking needs it. Because no matter how good their roster is, and no matter how good their television has been, and no matter how good their pay-per-views have been, Slammiversary was one of the best shows of the year. Bound for Glory was a great show. Came nowhere close to Slammiversary, which I'll talk about in a second. 
They blurred the line so much that it created such a buzz that I got everybody talking and the company desperately needs it because they can't seem to find a level of momentum that is steady. They're trying and trying and trying and trying and they're putting on matches. Fucking concrete jungle matches. No holds barred matches. You got Sammy Callahan taking a fucking railroad spike to the head with Pentagon Jr. They're going out of their way to make sure you are talking about their show and they're not gaining any momentum. If they have been gaining momentum, I would be watching their show on a weekly basis. I cannot. I cannot. And now that they're moving to 10 o'clock, I don't know how. How they're going to get anybody interested in their show. They're moving to 10 o'clock on Pop TV. From 8. Because they're losing viewers weekly. They lost about 50,000 viewers in the lead up on the Go Home Show to Bound for Glory. That's not good. It's not good whatsoever. I can't watch their television show. I don't like their production. I don't like the fact that it's taped. And don't get me started about NXT being taped. NXT taped compared to Impact taped is a completely different ballgame. The production value on WWE is uh, on another level compared to Impact Wrestling. I don't like their production. And for, and for the... And, and, and just to throw everybody else another fun fact, I can't stand Josh Matthews. I think he's terrible. I think he is god-awful, which... Another thing about Josh Matthews, and I know I'm going off, off tilt here. I, I was standing in front of the... I don't know if they were the defensive line or the offensive line of the New York Giants. They, there were several New York Giants players sitting in front of me. Josh Matthews comes over. They, he's getting them seats and whatnot. One guy comes up to Josh Matthews and says, Hey, bro, can I get a picture with you? I don't have the time. You know, the fucking time. People come up to me and ask me for a picture at House of Glory. They don't come up to me because they know me from House of Glory. They come up to me because they love what I do here on YouTube with the podcast. They know you for a fucking commentating job at Impact Wrestling. If you don't have the time for one fucking person to take a picture, then, bro, you know, that that ain't doing your stock very good. On top of that, I don't even know how Don Callis sits next to you. I'd go back and watch the show, but I don't want to listen through his insufferable commentary for three hours. What a fucking prick. And I see him roaming back and forth on the outside after the show with a glass of wine. Keep drinking. Anyway. Aries walks off, giving the double bird. Got people talking. Now, the question is, why did this happen? Is it part of the script? Or is it Aries being a dick and ruining a great moment for John Morrison? This could very well be part of the script. They could be really, really, really reaching here, going into the Vince Russo realm with a storyline like this. Do I think it is that? I don't know. I don't know. And to be honest with you, I don't care. I don't care. If this is a storyline, this is brilliant. This is the type of shit that I want to see more of. This is the type of shit I'd book. Got people talking. That's all that matters. For a company that has nothing else going on for it, this is the best thing that they could do. Now, if it is legit, and Ares walked off, no sold Starship pain, and then walked off, walked out of the arena, and gave everybody a fuck you then Austin Aries is a prick. He's playing the role that he plays on television. He's a fucking dick. And he should be ashamed of himself. And if that is the case, you know, I don't know where else he's going to work. Because as far as I know, Aries was on Talk is Jericho, and he explained how his relationship with Don Callis is great. Either something broke down in the build to Bound for Glory, or or we're completely being strung along like puppets. I I don't know, and and quite frankly, I don't care. But if he did do it, he should be ashamed of himself. He's already burned the bridge with WWE. He went back to Impact Wrestling, they made him the world champion, and if he did what he did last night, and it was legit, and there is personal issue there, he should be ashamed of himself, and he's burning another bridge, which, to, to Aries, if he burns the Impact Bridge, if he burns the WWE Bridge, how many more bridges are there left to burn? Not many. 
If Aries did this legit, who would want to hire him knowing that he has this type of attitude? Ring of Honor, New Japan, they're going to want to bring him in? I don't know. I'm not even thinking that far ahead. Impact has Monday and Tuesday worth of tapings here at the Melrose Ballroom. We could very well see Austin Aries on these shows. If we don't see Austin Aries on this show, it's going to get people talking even more. But I did not like the ending if it was real because Aries fucked over Morrison's moment. He fucked over the entire company and he took away a moment and made it all about himself. He made it all about himself. And that's not the type of guy that I would want on my roster as a world champion nonetheless. I wouldn't want him on my roster, period. Because he isn't about the company. He has no respect for the business. And he's all about himself. Now, they gave Aries the world championship because of the level of trust that I'm sure they had in him. He betrayed that trust if this was real. If this was legit. He betrayed Don Callis' trust. And making it all about himself is a shit move. I understand that Aries was given the world title, and I understand, let's flip the side here, let's flip the other side of the coin, I understand if Aries was pissed, I understand if he was pissed, because Aries left a company in Stanford, where they treated him like shit, and they had him embarrassed, they misused him, they miscast him, it was just god awful what they did with him there. And he left for political reasons, I'm sure. I'm sure. So we get to Impact. They give him the World Championship. And here Austin Aries is faced with this dilemma again. He's staring down the issue of politics. The only reason why I think Austin Aries would be upset is because they gave him the world title and built the momentum that they have on his back. He carried this brand to legitimacy in a period where people were leaving Impact and not wanting to work in Impact, and the people were watching Impact, Aries came back and brought a level of legitimacy to the company, and the only thing I can think of is, well, this is their biggest show of the year, and I'm the world champion, and I gotta drop the fucking world championship and all the work that I did to a guy who is starring on Survivor, and you wanna give him the world title because you wanna build off publicity with John Morrison through Survivor as your world champion? What type of shit is that? You're building your world champion through a reality television show. I'm here because I'm the real deal. I'm a fucking wrestler. That's the only reason I could think of if Aries was legitimately upset. Leaves politics in Stanford, comes to Impact, faced with more politics, they take the title off of him, which really, if you think about it, if you think about it right now, who else is lined up for a world title shot in Impact Wrestling? Aries is the best wrestler in that company outside of Morrison. And the reason they gave Morrison the title, I'm only assuming, I'm not saying this is legit. The only reason why they gave Morrison the title is because he's on Survivor and they want to build the Impact brand and the Impact title through Morrison, through Survivor. Maybe that's why Aries walked out. Maybe that's why he said, fuck this shit. I don't know. I, I don't know. And, and like I said before, I don't care. I think it's great. If it's part of the plan, part of the script. If it's not, I can't really sit here and say I agree with Austin Aries, no matter how good the fucking guy is. Selfishness, all about himself, uh, a Napoleon complex, you know, just... It, it's just not good. It's just not good. You know, the, 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 what, what do they used to say back when you were... You know, trying out for the high school team. There's no I in team, right? There's no I in team. You know? Aries made it all about himself, took away from John Morrison's moment. They're all everybody's there for the same thing. Be a big boy. Pull your tights up. Go back out there. Show them why you deserve another fucking title shot. And tear the house down in a rematch. Morrison's not gonna hold the title forever. It's not like you're not gonna get another impact world title. Do what the company asks. It's not that out of context where it's a bad situation. I don't really agree with it. You know? Impact is, Impact is going to gain nothing off of Survivor. Nothing. 
I would be shocked if people who are watching Survivor for John Morrison are going to come over and watch Impact Wrestling on a regular basis and Impact's going to grab them fans and make them lifelong fans. Barely any. Maybe that's why Aries is pissed. I don't know. I would be upset that everything that I did and carried this company on my back and did, I got to give away because you want to build this guy through a reality TV show as the world champion. You know, I'm here to wrestle. I'm a professional wrestler. I'm not a reality TV star. I'm not uh, I'm not uh, an ex-athlete. I am a one-sport athlete. I am a pro wrestler. I, I don't know what else to say. They did everything beautifully. Picture perfect. But the gray line here with what happened at the ending, we don't know. And as of right now, until there is clarification with what happened... People are still talking, and that's only good for impact. We're going to have to wait and see if Aries and what he did and his actions were legit. If they were, then we can fl- then we can roast him after the fact. We don't know yet. I'm not going to roast him yet until there's confirmation that, yeah, this is legit. But right now, if people are talking about it, that's all that matters. Because the more mouths that are talking about impact, the more eyes that are on impact, the better. Because the company fucking needs it. And I thought it was everything just rolled into one, made it a great main event, made it a must-see main event, and this is what more, more companies should be doing. The gray area of if it's real, is it, uh, is it real or is it a, uh, a, a work? That's what we need to see. People are thirsty for that type of shit. And Impact did it beautifully. So that was that. The entirety of the show, to me, you know, I enjoyed the show. I I really did, you know. Again, I want to thank Impact Wrestling for inviting me out. The intimacy of the Melrose Ballroom, the first time I was there. You know, I'd like to see House of Glory run some shows in there, man. I think it was a great venue, you know. Sound was good. Crowd was good. Intimate crowd. You know, some of the crowd throughout the night was a little obnoxious. You know, there was one instance where they were chanting 205 at Austin Aries. I mean, I don't give a fuck if you hate him or, or, or if you love him. Why would you chant that? Like, why would you chant that to him? Like, I understand that you paid a ticket, you could do whatever the fuck you want, but, you know, at two or three different times, it's fucking obnoxious. They were chanting Vega, Zelina Vega. Him and Vega used to be a thing. So they started to chant his ex-girlfriend's name. Again, disrespectful. I hate wrestling crowds sometimes. Most of the times, I love them. Sometimes, I fucking hate them. During that main event, I, I actually hated them. The overall show was great, crowd was great, atmosphere was great, did not watch it on TV, did not know how we came off on TV. I probably won't go back and watch it, but I enjoyed myself and I want to thank Impact Wrestling for inviting me out. Another thing I wanted to mention here is the production of the show, like just being there and watching their crew work. It seemed, I mean, it's not going to be a WWE production, but I mean, there were things that I seen that it was just messy and sloppy. You know, they they really didn't, I guess, expect the overabundance of people wanting to come see the show. So there was barely any room. I mean, I stood for all three hours. There were uh, Giants football players standing in front of me, which they were like eight feet fucking tall. Couldn't see a goddamn fucking thing from certain aspects of the show. Just their ring crew, their ring crew worked hard, but there were some instances where, you know, there were a few table spots during the night and like the ring crew didn't have a broom to sweep out the table debris. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, I'm looking over at some people like they don't have a fucking broom. You got, you got, I don't know if it was Scott Demore who was there. I don't know who the fuck was there. People in suits getting in the ring and just like fucking wiping the, the, the table debris out like they don't have a fucking broom. There's a fucking bodega right down the street. Go buy yourself a fucking two dollar broom. You know, it's a little, it's a little, little lame. It's a little amateurish, you know, for Impact Wrestling. But you know, just certain things there. You know, you know the seating and some of the things I've seen in the ring were just a little, eh. You know, could be better next time. But the overall show was a very good experience. It was a very good show. Is it on the level of Slammiversary? Absolutely not. Slammiversary knocked it out of the fucking park. There was just a level of, we we are going to come out and fucking wow your fucking brains out. We're going to wow you, and we're going to be fucking, we're, we're going to have you talk the next fucking month until we do the next pay-per-view. That's what, that's what happened. 
That's what happened with Slammiversary. This had such a high level of expectation coming out of Slammiversary that you know, it was impossible for, for Impact Wrestling to live up to those expectations. But that doesn't mean this was a bad show. It was a very good show. Show started off with Matt Seidel and Ethan Page versus Rich Swan and Willie Mack. Man, Willie Mack is... I love him from Lucha Underground, man. He's been one of my favorites watching Lucha Underground, but Willie Mack, I'm glad he's an Impact man. I'm glad he's getting uh, another stage to perform on. He and Rich Swan make a great fucking team, man. Rich Swan has such a infectious energy. I love Rich Swan. I really do. Willie Mack and, and Rich Swan make a great pairing. Mack, for his size, man, it's like watching Keith Lee in NXT, man. Mack, for his size, is it, it's it's like unfair that a man that size can do the things that he does and move the way he does. It's great. Matt Seidel and Ethan Page. This is my first time legitimately. Like I said, I don't watch Impact Wrestling on a week-to-week basis. Ethan Page was very impressive yesterday. Uh, he and Matt Seidel uh, tried their best to win here, but in the end, it was Rich Swan and... And Willie Mack winning this match. This may have been the best match of the night. To be honest with you. This was a great opening match. And I loved everything about this match. Man, the energy was there. It was good tag team wrestling. Rich Swan is one of my favorites. You know, Willie Mack got the hot tag. Mack dropped Page uh, and Seidel with a jumping knee. Uh, or actually, no, Mack dropped Page and then Seidel jumped to uh, to Mack's face with a knee. Uh, up to the top rope with Swan, but gets shoved off. Seidel with a standing hurricanrana. Swan ends up flipping into Page and giving him a hurricanrana. All four guys are down, and all four up and start swinging at each other. Page mistakenly kicks Seidel, uh, and then a stunner by Mack to Page. Seidel swinging neckbreaker on Mack. Swan with a spinning kick. Handspring cutter. Heads to the second rope for a beautiful Phoenix Splash. One, two, three, Rich Swan and Willie Mack win in the opening match. Like I said, this was probably the best match of the night. These guys easily went 20 minutes. I enjoyed every minute of it. And if there's one match you guys got to go back and watch outside of the main event just to see what happened with Aries, it would be this one for sure. After the match, Willie Mack gets on the microphone, uh, says he's happy to be in front of the Impact crowd. There are two front seats open, and Mack uh, wanted to see who the loudest two fans could be in the arena, and he gave away... Two front seats, thanks to the pay-per-view sponsors for Impact on Bound for Glory Night. Eli Drake comes to the ring, and he has an open challenge. He issued an open challenge to any New Yorker. Eli Drake, man, you know, I'm back and forth on Eli Drake. I want to like Eli Drake, and then I look at Eli Drake, and I don't realize, like, if there's anything, like, that stands out about him, to be honest with you. The guy's got, the guy looks like a million fucking dollars. He does, he looks Absolutely fantastic. He's great on the microphone. I'm just not sure that... And, and I'm thinking as, as, as a WWE fan, if he if he was to come in NXT, I honestly feel he would go the way of EC3. I feel like he would be stuck in a bubble like EC3. They haven't done anything with EC3 in NXT yet. And I feel like Eli Drake would follow that. He's a great athlete. He's got a great look. He's great on the microphone. But I don't think... I don't really think that there's anything that stands out about him to a point that would make him... That guy that you tune in every week to see. That's just my opinion of Eli Drake. Now, I don't mean that in a bad thing. I just I just wish that there was something else about him that stood out to get me to say, wow, this guy's fucking great. But he looks great, looks like a million bucks, sounds like a million bucks on the microphone. Is an open challenge here? He made fun of the New York Giants that were sitting right in front of me. He, he made fun of the Giants' 1-5 record. Um, and, and, that, and that got a laugh out of me. I thought that was hilarious. So, he, he's like anybody in the greater New York City area. I am issuing an open challenge. And out comes James Ellsworth. Now, a lot of people in attendance felt the same way that I did. I just stood there with a, with, with a dumbfounded look on my face. The Impact crowd let everybody know exactly how they were feeling. And, and it was the same feeling that I was feeling. Fuck you, Ellsworth. You know, I don't know why Impact brought this clown in. I mean, I understand that Impact wants to gain some momentum and they want to gain uh, some new fans and they want to get people talking. I don't understand why they brought that. I don't even know why this segment was even on the show. I, I really don't. After this, Abyss came out anyway. Should have just been Abyss, you know? But James Ellsworth comes out and he challenges Eli Drake 
he, he really didn't have much to say. You know, he's like, I'm not from New York, but I dated someone from Staten Island. I lived in her basement, but I dated someone from Staten Island. Bro, you can't get anyone that looks like Carmella in this lifetime or the next 10. Okay? And please don't remind me indirectly of your association with Carmella, who A, had a reign of terror as the SmackDown Live Women's Champion, god-awful, a reign that ruined Asuka to the point where we see her now, and B, I didn't want to see you on television then or now. So why are you here? I thought I got rid of you then. Now I gotta come to New York City, Queens, Melrose Ballroom, my first Impact show, and I can't get away from James Ellsworthless. He ain't even from New York, he's from Maryland. But I dated someone from Staten Island. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. And I dated Jennifer Love Hewitt back in high school. Eli Drake completely destroyed this guy with two fucking... Uh, he, he, what, what did he do? He gave... Um, look, he did white noise. Sheamus is white noise. Two times. He did it once and the crowd said one more time. So obviously Eli Drake added a little extra juice on top of the second one, which was fantastic. Ellsworth looked like he was fucked up from both. I was pleased. Crowd was pleased. Fuck you, Ellsworth. There you go. I think Impact actually... I, I, I think they, they didn't realize how hated this guy was. I, I thought they... I, I honestly think that Impact thought this guy was more popular than he was. And then they brought him in and he was just a fucking embarrassment. No way they should have been on the show. But he got his ass kicked and people enjoyed it. So that was that. And then Abyss comes out. And he puts Eli Drake through a table. Grabs him by the throat, choke slams him through the table. You know, Abyss was nominated into the Hall of Fame, the Impact Hall of Fame, and it was one last hurrah for, uh, for Abyss. So there you go. You know, people were talking about maybe Tommy Dreamer, maybe Bully Ray, both from New York. Tommy Dreamer from, from Yonkers and Bully Ray from Hell's Kitchen. People were even talking about Jericho. Even though Jericho is Canadian, right? He was born in Long Island. He was born in New York. And then raised in, in Canada. That would have been great. People were talking about that. Jericho here. Jericho even tweeted, No, I'm not there. I'm watching it at home. Which I thought was a troll. And then we would eventually see him somewhere in the show, but we didn't see him at all. Moving on here, man. Tessa Blanchard versus Taya Valkyrie for the Impact World or the Women's Championship, the Impact Knockouts Championship. I love Tessa Blanchard, man. I think Tessa Blanchard is awesome. Awesome. I think right now, outside of Tony Storm, she is my favorite female talent right now in professional wrestling. She is fantastic. She is exactly what we need. She carries herself like a champion. She looks like a champion. She wrestles like a champion. And I mentioned this to my buddy Carmine, who was standing right behind me at Bound for Glory last night. I, I looked over at him when the match was over, and I'm like, the reason why I love Tessa Blanchard so much is because there's a, just there's just a level of intensity that she exudes in her matches that really just sucks you in. And it's great to see because a lot of the women now, they're all fluff. They're afraid to take a bump. They're afraid to fucking pull their hair extensions out. They're, they're afraid to break a fingernail. Tessa wrestles like a fucking wrestler. There's a level of intensity. She goes in there and she don't give a fuck what she... She wants to fucking wrestle. And that's the way she comes off. There's an intensity there that you don't see. And that's why I like her so much. And even when I watch Charlotte, you know, people want, people want to say, oh, Charlotte's the queen. You know? She ain't no fucking queen. It's Tessa and then Charlotte. I'd even go Tessa, Sasha, and then Charlotte. Tessa, Sasha, Becky, and then Charlotte. Charlotte's overrated, folks. Charlotte's overrated. She's only where she is because she's a flair. And I love Ric Flair, but... You know, WWE pushing Charlotte to uh, X amount of title reigns just to live up to her, fa her father's legacy. You know, it doesn't, make, it doesn't make her a great champion. So give me a break. Taya did great here as well. She matched Tessa, you know, blow for blow. Both women were very intense. And Tessa Blanchard wins and she retains the Impact Women's Championship here. Uh, the match ended with Blanchard... Uh, on the apron, she gets yanked back in. Uh, Taya does a road to Valhalla. Referee was fixing the apron like a fucking dumbass. Apparently, there was something happened with the apron. You know, Tessa pulled the apron. 
uh, up, uh, and the referee was, like was more concerned about his OCD, com- uh, you know, compared to the fucking the the match that was happening behind him. Referee was fixing the apron, didn't get the pin quick enough. Two count. Valkyrie looks for another one. Blanchard stomps her foot, avoids a charging Valkyrie who flies into the ring post. DDT cover. She kicks out. Crowd thought it was over. Blanchard heads to the top rope, looks for a tornado DDT, but does hit a hurricanrana, sending Valkyrie into the second turnbuckle. Blanchard heads to the top rope. And a flying code breaker. I'm sure Jericho watching at home on the Fight TV app was pleased with that. Flying code breaker, one, two, three. Great match, man. Great, great match. The thing with Tessa is she is the Impact Women's Champion. But who else is there to challenge Tessa on on the same level as her? It's Tessa. And then she is so superior to everybody else on that roster. It's like, who else is there to challenge Tessa Blanchard right now? By the looks of it, she may be champion forever. I honestly don't think anybody is even close to being on Tessa's level to a point where they can challenge, let alone take the title from her. Tessa wins. Damn good match. Taya had a great showing here. And Tessa, self-explanatory, man, one of the best women's wrestlers in the entire world, if not the best right now in all of wrestling. Moose versus Eddie Edwards, man. I was actually very, very impressed with Moose. I even tweeted out one of the few things I tweeted out because I had zero service at the Melrose Ballroom, which fucking pissed me off because I wanted a live tweet during the entire show. Couldn't. Tweets were coming in late. I mean, I would tweet about this match and then would finally send when I was uh, in the middle of the Sammy Callahan match with Pentagon. It was ridiculous. But Moose, I, I, did, I did tweet th- this one thing. Moose's new gimmick, man. Moose, the way he carried himself last night, I was sitting there at like third row from ringside. He carried himself like a million dollars, man. Moose... And his cocky attitude is is great. You know, I was never a big fan of Moose, man. I was never a big fan of the football guys turn for turn pro wrestlers. You know, a lot of them don't really pan out. You know, a lot of them are very one dimensional. But Moose is athletic. Guy throws a fucking sick drop kick. Guy's got some fucking height to him. You know, in in the drop kick. Great stuff here, man. Eddie Edwards. I don't I don't really get what Eddie Ed, you know what they're doing with Eddie. It's like he's a reincarnation of Tommy Dreamer. Right? Not really something I care about, but. You know, it is what it is. Eddie Edwards here wins by DQ. Moose uh, and and Edwards barely even got started. Edwards rolls to the ring with a kendo stick. Uh, He momentarily is chasing Moose around the ring. Edwards nails the Boston Neat Party early on. Goes for the cover. Instead, he goes for a kendo stick. And Killer Cross attacks from the crowd. Killer Cross came from the crowd. I I really couldn't see because I had the fucking Giants player standing up. Killer Cross comes from the crowd choking out uh, Edwards. And he looked like he was he, he was dressed like Loki. Look, he was dressed like a fucking hitman. So he comes out. Eddie Edwards is uh he he, he wins by DQ because Killer Cross comes in and chokes him out. So then Tommy Dreamer comes out, and Tommy Dreamer gets on the microphone and says the crowd isn't going to stand for a finish like that and calls for the bell to be rung. So we go from a match with Eddie Edwards and Moose to now Killer Cross and Tommy Dreamer being involved. So it's Tommy Dreamer and Eddie Edwards versus Moose and Killer Cross. A no-DQ Texas Tornado match. This was uh, a wild brawl. That's all this was. This was fun. This was probably one of the most fun match of the night, I I I would have to say. Uh, There was a top rope hurricanrana by Edwards on Cross. Uh, uh, Chops left and right here. Moose came in to break it up. Edwards and Moose go at it in the ring, back and forth. Edwards hits a blue thunder bomb a la Sami Zayn. Dreamer and Cross now in the ring. Dreamer hits a cutter on Cross. Edwards tosses Dreamer a kendo stick, but a side suplex on Dreamer. Moose with a powerbomb on Edwards. Moose tries to take Edwards' head off with a kendo stick, but Edwards hits a roll-up. Very out-of-nowhere finish there, man. So uh, it made Moose look like a dumbass, but either way you look at it, Edwards gets the roll-up. One, two, three. Post-match, Cross chokes Edwards, and Moose hits a devastating spear on Eddie Edwards. They take him out. And uh, they double power bomb him on the apron as they leave the ring, man. Very, very fun match. And it is what it is, man. It was just a good time. We had OVE. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Dave Christ, Jake Christ, and Sammy Callahan versus Pentagon, Phoenix, and Brian Cage. OVE rules, which means there's no rules at all. But this was the one match that I was looking forward to most. And I, I, I gotta I gotta be honest with you, man. I, I love Sammy. I love Pentagon. I love Phoenix. I think Brian Cage is awesome. I think OVE is great. I, I think all of OVE is great, man. 
great look. They got uh, just a great a great feel to them, you know. But I was I was left wanting more with this match. Man, I, I felt slightly disappointed, and, and, and that's probably m- mostly to do with me, because after watching Sammy and Pentagon at Slammiversary, and I, I'm thinking we're gonna we're, we're gonna see that that same level of fucking hellacious just brutality here. And I was hoping for something, something reminiscent of that, but we didn't get any of that. You know, and this actually ended up being shorter than I expected, and it ended up being a little disappointing in my eyes. So we had OVE win via pinfall. This was crazy all over, man. There was really there was really nothing out of the ordinary here, as far as what Sammy and Pentagon have already shown you. But the ending, man, I, I swear to God, the ending reminded me of something from one of the one of the Terminator movies. Seriously, and, and they call Cage the Machine. So so Cage, so Cage is getting a Terminator chance start. And wait for fucking Kenny Omega to come out here and just fucking one wing angel everybody. So we, we get Cage starting up a Terminator clap, and he gets into the ring with all three OVE guys. He takes down all three. So Jake, with a number of kicks to Cage, Dave lifts Cage up and hits the all seeing eye on Cage. Cover kicks out at one. So Brian Cage pretty much kicked out of. I, I, I'm assuming that's their finishing move. Kicked out of the one count. So then they all start kicking Cage. You got Dave. You got Jake. You got Sammy going at it back and forth. There was three guys kicking. I felt like I was watching Arnold Schwarzenegger just being fucking killed in one of the Terminator movies. I'm waiting for fucking Brian Cage to rise up from all these fucking barrage of kicks. And, and nothing ever happened, man. They kick him into oblivion. And he kept asking for it. I, I, it came to a point where he just he just pretty much was out cold. He was dead. He was fucking dead to the world. So then Sammy Callahan comes over and delivers a pile driver, and that was it. That was all for one, two, three. This is Cage's first loss on Impact Wrestling, man. So we may be we may be shifting to a Sammy Callahan Bryant Cage match. We may be seeing Sammy Callahan with the X Division title, man. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. OVE wins by pinfall. Fun match, but, you know, I expected a little bit more. And I guess my level of expectation was not met. Not to say that it wasn't a good match. I was entertained by what these guys did. I love Phoenix. I love Pentagon. I love Sammy. Cage. OVE's great. But after what we've seen in Slammiversary, and then you had Sammy and Callahan, uh, Sammy Callahan and, and, and Pentagon in there, it was, it was nothing that we haven't seen. It's very ordinary. So there you go. Santana and Ortiz, LAX. Versus the OGs, King, Hernandez, and Homicide. Concrete jungle match. Conan was taken out earlier in the show. That's why he wasn't there, but uh, uh, I'm not saying that Conan didn't emerge from the back. He wasn't there to start the match. LAX is probably the best tag team in the world right now. They have a very, very, very similar feel like the Young Bucks have, and I mean that in a way where it's they are very influential. They are doing things right now, and they're working their fucking ass off. LAX is doing it right to get noticed. They are letting their 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 teamwork, their actions, their 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 whole vibe just speak for themselves. I would be shocked if, if Triple H is not calling these guys for NXT in about two years. Shocked. Shocked. I'm hoping we see LAX and the Young Bucks eventually. I mean, I think it's happening on Jericho's cruise, but nobody's going to be there. Unless you're there, you're going to watch it, but it's not going to be televised, I don't think. But I'd love if if House of Glory, they're cool with the Bucks. Maybe we get House of Glory to get the Young Bucks in there and challenge LAX for the Hog Tag Team titles. Be great. Or just a super match, you know? I think that would tear the house down. I'd love to see LAX continue their grind, man, and face the top teams like that, the Bucks. You know, I'd love to see them against the Undisputed Era. I think these guys, their ceiling is so fucking... It's immeasurable. LAX is doing great things, man. One of my favorite tag teams in the world right now. Santana Ortiz versus the OGs. This concrete jungle match, man. They they took off the ring tarp. They took off the mat. They took off the buckles. They took off the apron. Literally everything. Now, where I was standing, they had these two tables propped up against the ring posts. One that said OGs and one that said LAX. It It was obviously part of the match, but until they moved out of the way... Until the tables were moved out of the way. I, my view was obstructed. So I really couldn't see what was going on. I don't know who came up with this match. But thank God it lasted 10 minutes. Thank Christ it lasted 10 minutes. 
I don't know how it came off on TV, but when I was there watching these guys do what they did, I, Hernandez was busted open within seconds. I think it was like I think it was Ortiz who 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 bashed him with a, a trash can lid. Guy was bleeding all over the fucking place. We didn't even get the match started. I don't know how it came off on TV, but the wooden beams. I I mean I never seen anything like this. I don't even know how this match got approved. I don't know who in Impact said, yeah, that's a good idea. I honestly thought someone was going to get seriously injured, killed, career ended by the end of this thing. Thank God it went 10 minutes. Man, the wooden beams came up and it was just, it was, I thought someone was going to die. There would be a back body drop or there'd be a, a fucking move on one of these beams. It, it, it was ridiculous, man. Beams were like fucking misplaced on the, on, on the ring. Shit was going crazy. Thank God this match lasted 10 minutes, man. It ended with a street sweeper. Santana, who comes off the top with the street sweeper, you know, he, he's not feeling good today. His, his, his spine, his back, his hip, his ass, got to be fucking killing him today. It's ridiculous, man. Uh, LAX wins here after Conan comes down and makes the save. Conan comes and swings away on King, sends him into the corner. Santana with a kick to the back of the head. Conan launches King into the other table. So the tables were used. They were destroyed. LAX comes off the top with a street sweeper on King. Cover one, two, three. They cover him in the Puerto Rican flag. And that was pretty much it. That was pretty much it. LAX wins this concrete jungle match. Hopefully we never see one of them again. Uh, that was ridiculous, man. I honestly, seriously thought someone was going to die here in this match. Ali went to the undead realm. And I actually enjoyed this, man. She went to go battle Sue Young. This was very, very well put together. Um, you know, Ali and Kiara Hogan were there trying to escape the undead realm with Sue Young. Sue Young is great, man. She embodies what a character should be in professional wrestling, and she lives the gimmick. You can tell Sue Young loves what she does, and and it, and it just it just vibes and it comes through like she lives the fucking undead bride. And I love that, man. When someone is so engrossed in their work, it actually shows. And I appreciate that more because they enjoy what they're doing. I'm going to enjoy what they're doing because they love it. But Allie wakes up next to Hogan here, trying to get her out of the coffin. Hogan is out as Allie leads her back to the exit. Uh, Sue Young had a uh, uh, an axe driven into her neck. Allie killed her for a second. Then she comes back from the dead because she's the undead bride. There, there was one instance here where, where Allie swung the axe, and it looked very weak. And I'm watching this. I'm like, w what's going on here, man? She, she's swinging the axe, and, and, and Sue Young catches the axe. Like, if you're going to swing the axe, swing the fucking axe. Give her a prop axe, but make it look realistic, please. You know, th this slow, lethargic movement. Swing it like, come on, dude. Swing it like you're swinging for a fucking home run. Swinging it like you like like you have no energy like you're, like you're half asleep. I didn't really like that. So at the end of this thing, they're trying to find a way out. We get uh, Rosemary showing up, and all of a sudden, we get Rosemary battling off all of Sue Young's minions, and she helps them open the coffin. Sue Young shows up. Rosemary fights her off in, in, in this cosmic battle. I thought I was watching Dragon Ball Z all of a sudden. I mean, this was cheesy, but I actually enjoyed it. You know, they got these powers coming out of their hands, and they're fucking, like, force-fielding each other, and they're, like, fucking battling each other in Dragon Ball Z universe. It, it was crazy. You know, and, and, and this popped. We were there live. And it, it, it just got a huge reaction. People, the people around us were like, what the fuck? Me and my buddy Carmine. You know, we, we were like, what the fuck's up? People love this shit. People were uh, going crazy for it. This was great. I can't wait to see more. It was great stuff. Really, really great stuff, man. So Allie wants to go back. Hogan says no. Allie yells at her. Doesn't look to be 100%. Like I said, uh, we had uh, uh, Rosemary come out. So it should be interesting, man. Rosemary versus Sue Young should be interesting. And then obviously, as you guys know, Johnny Impact won the world title from, uh, from Austin Aries. Uh, this was a very, very good match, man. Um, pretty much what everybody's talking about is the ending. I'm not really going to go over what happened in the match. Aries had a beautiful 450 splash. Picture perfect. Aries dove on top of Taya Valkyrie, which was not by accident whatsoever. It was all purposely done. That was huge. Absolutely huge. Aries and Taya are talking trash. This is my favorite part of the match. 
uh, outside the end. The Aries knees uh, Johnny to the head. Les Chantry locked in. Impact gets out of it. Aries looks to tag out Impact. Impact dodges, and Aries launches a suicide dive onto Taya, sending her into the barricade. It looked fucking nasty. Impact then uh, continues on. Aries on the floor, just wailing away. Back in the ring, Impact with a kick to the throat. Brain Buster st starts your pain, and then you guys know what happened at the end. So that is that, guys. Your Impact Bound for Glory review. Thank you so very much. Uh, I hope you are uh, enjoying the Impact coverage here on the channel. Whenever we get something like this, I will cover here on the channel. But if you guys did, please hit that thumbs up, man. Let's try for 2,000 thumbs up. And I will see you guys on Monday Night Raw tonight for the Raw review. Uh, thank you all so very much. We're nearing 99,000 subscribers. And I will see you, like I said, for Monday Night Raw tonight. Leave me a comment. Let me know, let me know what you guys feel about the Austin Aries-Johnny Impact situation. And I'll see you guys tonight for Raw. I'll talk to you later.